Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here with another episode of Rate My Base. And today we are going to fight uh, Ashen Rider. So here he is. He is 2,277 trophies right now. Three of the five stars. So we're going to pull up his base. Check it out. I've never attacked him before. We're not going to use any scrolls or resurrection. Uh, it's my first attempt at fighting him, and I go through everything here and let you know what I'm thinking about his little base in the mini map here. Um, first of all, I do like his setup for the curve of his road. Um, the one downside I noticed right away is that everything is right here. So if you get past this barricade right here, this one, and you come and sit like right here, and you use the Apocalypse Scroll, that guy, that will take out 90% of his base with one scroll, and everything is just going to get raped. Um, so, you, you, yeah, if you, if you want to use one scroll and you can kill his whole base pretty much with like no effort at all, um, so that's something that you don't want to bunch everything up. But thankfully for him, we're not using scrolls, so he's got a, a you know a fighting chance here. Um, Decent layout on the barricades. They're far apart from each other. Um, this is a decent one, so I can't burn this one and hit down at the same time. Uh, I'd have to, you know, burn these two. Um, spike setup here is interesting. A double spike. You don't normally see double spikes anywhere, but it looks like he's going to have some gargoyle towers right here. So gargoyle tower, gargoyle tower, probably a gargoyle tower over here with the spikes. That's a pretty good setup, um, typically. But it's just a little bit overkill. Uh, you're not going to have that many infantry troops. You want to spread them out a little bit. Um, I would take probably some of these and move them up over here. And that would make his base better. And it wouldn't be as susceptible to one uh, apocalypse scroll. So that's probably what I would do there is move the spikes and you know maybe two gargoyle towers, one gargoyle tower, and a cannon over here or an arrow tower. Um, that's pretty much what stands out. His troops here, so he's got a lot of Paladins um, and a lot of R Blasters, which is pretty much the best troops in the game. Uh, pretty standard there. Nice thing that he has cannons, though, because cannons have a long range, and so they'll be able to sit back and not get killed by the Sword Rain. Uh, cannons are a very, very powerful troop to have. And then the Pyromancers, he doesn't have a lot, but he has a couple, which is good. So all in all, it should be good. Uh, should be, you know, looks pretty decent for this setup uh, in this trophy range. He has a Firebolt cannon, at least one. Uh, it's his very last target, so he's probably only got one. And, yeah, you know, other than that, looks good. We're going to keep our same setup that we typically use, the Hammer Strike, the Firestorm, the Sword Rain. And they, you know, are still level 9, 6, and 5, respectively. And we're going to keep our Knight, Cannon, and our Blaster. We might actually need to use some our Blasters in this battle um, because of his cannons. So that may be interesting. We'll see how his setup is. And we'll see how many uh, Pyromancers he has and also our Blasters. I don't think so, but we might. Um, we might need one. So since this barricade is right here, uh, we're going to bust out cannons uh, right away. Two cannons. And that barricade will go down in about you know one or two seconds, and then we'll start bringing out some knights. And we're gonna go ahead and attack him. Hopefully he's not online right now. He's not online, so we got an attack going. Two cannons, bring out some knights. So you can see after the two cannons shoot their fireball, or cannonball, or whatever you want to call it, that goes down. Run up there so I can hit the uh, froster. It actually didn't show in the mini map that he had frosters, um, so that's something that I wasn't expecting really but that means he must have a very small amount of frosters uh, so bringing out a bunch of knights now gonna head back here see what's there so I'm gonna bring out some R blasters to help kill those cannons because you can see all my um, all my knights are gonna die up here so they're not gonna be that effective against his setup with these spikes and the gargoyle towers. 
So I do need to get rid of this barricade up here. And I did, thankfully. Uh, so now I'm going to head back, heal. I have my Arb Blasters there, so they're going to help protect me. Calling some knights now to regenerate some. Uh, trying to stay away. And the Arb Blaster is actually doing a good job on the Pyromancer over there, which is great for me. Bring out tons more of knights. Summoned one more cannon. Going to come up here and actually run away <laughs> because... There's three R blasters, and I don't have that much life, and I definitely don't want to die. Need to regenerate, so I need to run back with the troops. All my guys there are doing a good job. Let the troops take those guys a little bit. Pop the firestorm. I unfortunately can't do anything really to these guys, so... Gonna do a sword rain and run up forward. So things are going fairly well. Uh, his defense is pretty much done now. We just got to the castle gates. Uh, probably not gonna have enough power here to get through it in 10 seconds. Uh, it's going to be very, very, very close, though. Uh, we'll see if my cannon can get up here in just one second and finishes off. And no, unfortunately, uh, he survived with just a second left. If I had one more second left, that gate would have gone down, and that would have been 100% victory for us. Um, so all in all, you can see, not a very good defense because... I almost got through all of it without using any scrolls whatsoever. Like I said, I was about one second away uh, from getting there. And unfortunately, you know, I got a 73% out of that. Um, there are some things in there that I did like. He did have a good, nice troop formation that kept you on your toes. The paladins uh, were all bunched up together, so he had like five or six of them together. And, you know, my hero couldn't really do anything to them. Um, the only thing I might have changed there was throw in one, like, Arb Blaster or two little archers. Because if you had two little archers and Arb Blaster, those guys do a lot of damage to the heroes. Whereas I can just kind of, like, run past the Paladins and they're slow. Um, you know, take one or two hits from each of them and then just move forward. But having an archer or ranged troop there uh, will definitely, definitely do a lot more damage to the hero. He did a good job with not having too many like bomb towers or things that didn't work well together in his base. Um, his towers and everything almost killed me about twice in that fight. I had to run back and that saved him from getting 100%. Uh, my hero, again, like I said, almost died so I had to run back and regenerate some. And so that's that's really the key thing and it saved him from not getting 100% there. So we'll pull up his base again. And you can see that was the benefit of having everything all bunched up here and his troops. These two little lone cannons and uh, Gargoyle Tower actually did a really great job for him because it delayed my hero. If I was able to kind of run past that and then my troops could have run, packed, run past that, that would have given us the win. If he had these like over here somewhere, somewhere closer, uh, but my troops weren't able to do anything to those guys and it slowed them down for a few seconds, and all he needed was about, you know, half a second or a second, and that's all it took for us not to be able to beat his base. Um, like I said, I would move probably two towers over here, and the the big downside is that one Apocalypse Scroll can take down everything right here. I guess you just go right towards the spike, Apocalypse Scroll, boom, done. Uh, so if you use, you know, seven, ten gems, whatever your scroll cost, you can defeat this base really, really easy. Um, otherwise, I do like the road layout, I do like that, and yeah, the, the towers worked well together. Um, I didn't really feel like he had that many bomb towers, but I guess the middle minimap is showing he did. Um, very good placement on his Firebolt tower over there. But yeah, as, like I said, I would remove like two of these guys and move them over here and have them something on the side over here, or maybe even like one here, one here. Like just move them back a little bit further. 
And like I said, I do like having my defenses more towards the castle gate versus in the, uh, like, by the tent where your troops spawn, because then it makes your troops have to walk a longer distance. But all in all, you know, I didn't beat his gate, um, so that's a plus. But I'm going to have to give this base, I, I'm going to say about a 6 out of 10, because, um, like I said, we were half a second away from getting that 100% without using any scrolls. Um, you know, definitely some room for improvement. Um, all in all, good wave troops, good setup there. The cannons and the art blasters, uh, very, very nice. And, you know, I might swap out that Froster with uh, another Pyromancer or, you know, something else to that degree. But all in all, good job, and that was a fun raid there. We almost did it, almost 100%, which kind of sucks for us, but next time. And, uh, you know, hope hopefully you enjoyed and got some tips and, uh, you know, learned how to attack you know, his base and help build a better defense. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Or if you want to get attacked and recorded and have my thoughts on your base, please leave your king name below there. And then, you know, little comments. Uh, you know, enjoy. And thanks for subscribing and watching.